orientation. Jesus says, it will be as in the days of Noah, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. What's so special about the days of Noah? Deception, devastation, depravity, because the human race had fallen into a reorientation of what it meant to be human. Now, I'm not going to get into a long study on Genesis chapter 6 where the fallen angels came and cohabitated with women and brought forth the Nephilim and destroyed the gene pool and only Noah was pure and could bring the human race into salvation. That's why God had to destroy the world. We all say, well, it was because of sin. Well, he should have destroyed it 10 years after that. Did Noah's family fall into sin? Yeah, so why didn't he destroy them? No, it had to go further than a sin issue. It was a reorientation of humanity. And the DNA was in fact changing, but I'm not going to get into that. But let me bring you up to the present trending right now. So in three ways, there is a human reorientation. Number one is an identity. Identity. We start with orientation and gender. This is just the beginning. Don't think this is the worst of it. This is simply the beginning of changing the identity of man. It starts with, and we've seen it in our days, sexual orientation. But it is a reorienting of our sexuality. And from the reorientation of sexual orientation, it has now moved into gender identity changes. How many of you know that? And so now we have come to the place where we do not have to identify the gender of a child even when it's born and it's got all the parts that I'd identify it. We can decide what gender we want that child to be later. And so there is a gender identification and with it has come all sorts of body modifications. All right, that's the ground floor. Now already this is completely acceptable worldwide, globally, in our society. A gender reorientation and a sexual reorientation. And it's completely here, folks. It's already here. So if you don't understand what's trending, lift your head up and look. All right? Understand the times you're in and that there's a present truth to deal with this. From the issue of identity, we now go into the sense of new creation. The ground floor was sexual orientation, gender identity, and body modification. And now, body modification is moving into DNA modification and transhumanism. And if you don't understand what transhumanism is, you need to see what's trending. This is globally. The belief that the human race will evolve beyond its current physical and mental limitations through science and technology. How many of you know what's trending usually hits Hollywood first? And from Hollywood it goes into the TVs. And from the TVs it saturates the minds of our young people. Old people say, oh, come on, that's just funny science fiction. But it is so saturating our culture But what is transhumanism? Let me help you understand some of it. I don't know if you've heard of Dmitry Itzkov, a Russian billionaire, founder of New Media Stars, web-based media company, founder of the 2045 Initiative, which aims to achieve cybernetic immortality by 2045. He's a billionaire. This is well-funded. This is scientific research, cutting edge. It's what's trending. It's combining the mechanics uh, of, of robotics and cyber science into the body to mingle the body with this level of genetic reorientation so that your body won't die, your soul will inhabit it. We go into the realm of cloning human beings and having host bodies, right? Guess who wants to occupy host bodies? The demonic. So we're reorienting human beings. Now you're going to say, but (laughs) come on, kid, this is just science fiction. Wake up, people. This is not science fiction. This is science reality. Things always start with science fiction only to be prophetic into where it's leading people. You remember Steve Jobs. People don't know what they want till we show them what they want. 
People want immortality without God. They're getting it. By 2045, they want to fully reorient society. And the beginning, I mean, just start watching and looking. Be alert. This is happening right now. And then the third aspect of this rehumanization, this reorientation of what is human. We've changed gender. We've changed body modification. We are now changing what it is to be human and mechanical or machine or at least genetically altering DNA to now the third level and that's what's trending and that is heavenly beings. We call them aliens. Oh, now you're way out there, Pastor. Come on. Now you're way out there with UFOs and aliens and all this stuff. Now you're way out there. Man, if you don't understand what's trending and what's happening in this world, where do you think all the beasts are coming out of in the book of Revelation? What do you think these frog creatures are? Toads? What do you think all of this activity in the heavenlies is happening? You want to see the Bible in the headlines? Here it is. And I'm not kidding. And I'm not deluded. This is the third phase. There have been more sightings. And remember, what did Jesus say? There will be a strong delusion. It will be so extreme that even the very elect could possibly be deceived. When people start showing up, other beings from other planets, they're not coming from other planets. They're coming from other dimensions. Does anybody have an idea of what dimension these beings are coming from? Come on, church. They're demonic. So the realm of the demonic, you could dress them up like aliens, you can dress them up in saucers, you can dress them up any way you want, but it's when the demonic comes to planet Earth as never before. Will the church be ready? We're still arguing whether we should, I don't know, have flavored cream cheese or not. Now let me ask you this. With this strong deception, strong delusions, and, and folks, you just need to talk to your children. This is the reality they have. If you're not aware of what your kids believe, and, and so you're trying to bring them to church once a month, when daily hour by hour, minute by minute, they are being brainwashed and hypnotized and reoriented both in sexuality and in gender and in what is being human and where did we come from and what's coming to visit. We need to bring our kids here and instruct them. We need to bring our friends and family here so that we would be instructed in understanding what is trending. Now, Hey, listen, where sin abounds, can someone give an answer to that? Where sin abounds, what much more? Grace. When you heard Jesus in Matthew 24 talk about this, He's saying deception's coming, devastation's coming, but that's not all. That's not the end. Then He says that there's going to be such depravity. And He says, but that's not all. And He said, it ain't over till this Word gets out to all nations. And that's what is mounting in the midst of this. So we need a church that's ready, that's in present truth, that is fired up and can handle these situations. And that's what I'm here to do with you. That's what this church is about. We want to be a present truth church. We want to instruct you. We want to teach you. We want to show you how to handle these situations. So when an alien shows up at your door, you call that thing out for what it is. All right, don't get all E.T. and try and phone home. You call that thing out for what it is. And when people are confused and they don't understand their gender and their identity, you point them to the one who can identify them in the depths of their soul and in the depths of their DNA and let them know that God knows who they are and God wants to bring them into the fullness of who they've been called to be. We've got the answer for such things. Now, let's take a look at this. And so, what's trending? We're looking at deception in three ways. 
It's the reorientation of humanity in its identity, in its new creation, and in heavenly beings. That's the deception. And the answer to this deception is Jesus Christ, the Word become flesh. Let me help you understand. First of all, concerning identity and reorientation, this is exactly why Jesus died. Jesus died. The Word became flesh. Jesus became a human. Is humanity important to God? How do you know? Somebody quote John 3.16. There we go. Listen, you don't need to study deep theology for this one. It's really simple. And he demonstrated it really plain on the cross. All right? How many of you are equipped to tell other people God so loves you that Jesus died for you? That is the power that can cut through the deception of who am I. Because when Peter identified Jesus, Jesus identified Peter. Jesus asked, who do men say that I am? Well, uh, what's trending right now, Jesus, is that uh, you're John the Baptist, come back from the dead. Well, I've heard trending is that you're quite possibly Jeremiah the prophet. Well, my trending uh, in my Facebook says that quite possibly you are that chosen one that Moses talked about. Peter says, look at all, this is silly. I don't care what's trending. I'll tell you, Jesus, in present truth, you are Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. That's what broke through. And he says, the Father revealed that. Not just what's trending out there among the people. The Father revealed that. The church has got to stop paying attention to what's trending for what we should do. We're seeing what's trending so that we can speak into it as to what God told us to do. But it's what God's telling us to do as to what we speak to what's trending out there. Does that make sense? Church, come on. We've got to hear from Father again, don't we? Now, we've got the answer. It's already here, and we're deceived as if we don't have an answer for all these problems. We certainly do. The issue is deception as to our identity. Half of you, all of you, didn't know who you were till you met Jesus. There might be a few of you sitting in here who don't know who you are. You're confused. You're troubled. And I want to tell you, Jesus can identify you. As Peter said, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus said, that's right. The Father's revealed it. And you are Petros. Simon, this is who you are. You're Petros. You're the rock. I'm going to build my church on the foundation of your confession. That's who you are. And when you get old, you're going to die like this. And you're going to do this. And you're going to be that. When Peter identified Jesus, Jesus identified him. Identity. You need to learn how to begin identifying people. When they don't understand, help them understand that there is a God who loves them. And who is holy. And that they are separated from him by their sin. And that there is a remedy for that sin. God so loved them that He died and bled for them to wash that sin off so that they can have an identity in Him. It's Jesus 101. And that's the first thing that the enemy has attacked. Secondly, is a new creation. They want to recreate mankind to live forever. But because Jesus died, we have eternal life put in us. Why would you want to live on this planet in this condition forever? Because they have no other hope. And what they don't understand is you get a bunch of robotic people, souls living in robots, you still have the same depravity. The parts just won't wear out. That's called hell. Is anybody with me? All they're doing is recreating hell, and who do you think is behind it? Come on, do you see the deception? But you tell the people there is a spirit of power, love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. This power is the indwelling Holy Spirit. Once you've been identified by Jesus, then you can be occupied by the very presence of God Himself. You don't need by robotics. We've got the Holy Spirit, amen? We are a new creation created in Christ Jesus to do good works and last of all is the heavenly beings we need wiser smarter other beings to come here we were the seed they planted in this planet they're so brilliant and so smart 
Can I tell you something? Demons have an understanding because they're outside of this corporal realm, corporal realm. They have an understanding in the spirit realm, but it doesn't mean they're all that much smarter. They just have more information. But the problem is they still are depraved. All right? So this alien abduction, this alien enterprise, these demonics coming into the earth are only going to bring more corruption, not enlightenment. There is one who has come, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And can I tell you what they want to do? They want to replace the church. They, they already have eliminated God from the picture. So who do they have to eliminate on planet earth that represents the kingdom of God? Hello? This is a showdown, people. If you don't understand the enemy that's at your door, come on, you're talking aliens. I'm talking demons. And you need to understand this. This is a present trending and reality. I mean, the sightings are off the charts. It's getting more and more blatant. And so you need to understand that you're going to start seeing these things like never before. And if you're not prepared, you're going to freak out. Oh, where's God? Where's God? There are aliens. Oh my gosh, maybe there isn't a God. You know how many people we're going to lose over this? Because the deception is going to be so grand. Now, again, you think I'm nuts and you think I'm crazy. Um, you're going to have to deal with that. Can the gospel withstand this level of deception? Absolutely. The gospel can. It's whether the church can. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there first comes a falling away, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. So there's going to be a great falling away. The word is apostate. apostate apostolo. So there's an apostate activity going on. Those who were saved, or at least we thought they were saved, Christians, believers, are going to fall away in great droves. The big question is, has it already begun? Absolutely, it has. And so I'm calling you to hang in there. I'm calling you to hang in. And I don't mean it in any mean way. I'm, I mean it in a way of warning and trying to prepare you for the craziness that's coming. And half of you are saying, oh, we don't have to put up with it. We're just going to get taken out of here. Well, then who's going to do the job that the church is supposed to do? Who's going to bring salvation to planet Earth? I don't know. I just want to get out of here. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and to good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawing near. So what's trending? The day is drawing near. Deception is trending. How are we going to beat it? We gather together, spurring one another on in love and in good works so that we're prepared to handle the craziness that's going on out there and the level of deception you're going to find yourself drifting into this but we need to gather together here's one of the biggest problems with the internet with so much uh, mass media you can now pick your top 40 hits of preachers you can watch anybody you want the best of them all I can just sit at home and watch them but you can't get what's happening in our midst Oh, I can have the, are you saying I can't have the Holy Spirit? Yeah, the Holy Spirit's there with you wherever you are. I'm talking about the ecclesia, the body of Christ, the called out ones, the church. What's going to start taking place in our midst is where there's deception, revelation's going to come. Where there's depravity, sanctification, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit's. Where there are false signs and wonders, there will be true signs and wonders where the people of God gather. And you've got to learn how to get along if you're going to try to win the lost. Did you know that lost people are people? 
If you can't get along with the church, how are you going to get along with them? I don't have to. I'm saved. I can stay away from them. You're not supposed to! You have to let it all go. Let it all go. Doubt, 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 doubt. Disbelief, disbelief, disbelief. Free. Free.